If you haven't already finished watching Season 6, including the Bull game, I recommend going to watch that now because I'm going to spoil the season and that game here in this recap. Welcome to the Kalispell Warhawk Dynasty, everybody. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and six seasons in this series are now officially complete. Unfortunately, the end to this year wasn't what we were hoping with a 41 to 38 defeat against the Utah Utes. It was the end of another era for our Warhawks, seeing some of our best players in school history graduate. And this is how their time ended. The offense had a really phenomenal performance. JR Battle goes out with three touchdowns and 300 yards. Unfortunately, the defense had one of their worst games of the season and we end up falling short by three. It's our first ever bowl game loss in this series. And it comes after we made it to bowl games three straight years and won all three. The last four years in this series have been very fun with Kalispell going a combined 40 and 14 after starting out with the program going 5 and 19 the first few years. We've turned Kalispell into a respectable football program and now we'll see if we can sustain this success with our biggest transition yet. We are moving on from some of the most iconic skill position players in this series. We're going to have brand new receivers next year, running backs, and a quarterback. These are the highest rated players we've ever had at Kalispell. There's a very good chance that we see the first players drafted out of Kalispell. That's never happened, but I think that Roscoe Sheridan and JR Battle can end that drought. So with that being said, let's recap the season today and go through some numbers and talk about the team and the future. We'll wrap up, of course, by talking about recruiting and what is going to be happening in the offseason. And I know everything is going very quickly here. I've mentioned like a couple weeks ago I wanted to get the Kalispell offseason done on this coming Saturday. And I didn't get the bowl game done until uh, yesterday and I couldn't get it up until this afternoon. So I had to accelerate everything because I didn't want to push back the offseason at all. So everything here is pretty much jam-packed. We go bowl game, recap, offseason very quickly. But here was the schedule for Kalispell, and it was a very good season for us. The offense especially took over, having the best offensive year that Kalispell has ever seen. We finally had an explosive offense capable of making big plays, I wasn't sure what to expect from the defense this year because of how much we lost after year five, but we were very inconsistent. We had some excellent games like the 38 to six matchup against Hawaii, but then we saw us lose 48 to 41 to San Jose State, a team that didn't even become bowl eligible. We opened the season in a non-conference game against Rice, and this game was interesting because both teams were terrible on third down going a combined two for 21 yet we end up scoring 37 points. JR Battle opened the season with four touchdowns and we saw just how explosive this team could be. We had Ja'Cory Day make a touchdown catch, Lamar Williams had two, and the breakout of Lamar Williams this year was one of my favorite things. We faced Jesse Heikinen and UCLA as our Pac-12 matchup of the year, and UCLA had a very down season. We took advantage of that by upsetting them 34 to 27 and spoiling the debut of highly touted quarterback Jesse Heikinen. We probably should have lost against Louisville, but that was the game where Hayden John Charles made the double coverage catch deep downfield to set up a game-winning field goal for us. That was an exciting win with no touchdowns from Kalispell. Then of course the upset against San Jose State and the defense had a couple games like this, including the bowl game. We just couldn't stop them at all. These numbers look very similar to what Stephon Parker did to us in the bowl game. And I know that in the future, defense has to be a high priority. We need a better secondary, we need to have more depth overall, and we have to get to the quarterback. We relied on blitzing so much this year to get pressure, and at times it worked really well, but having to blitz to get pressure keeps your defense at a disadvantage. We did play pretty well in conference, putting up some high scores in these matchups. 
We have a few rivalries in this series that we've created against Boise State, Wyoming, and Utah State, and we swept those games. Ended up slipping here against Colorado State, 26-21. Closed up very well against Hawaii. Hold on in the conference championship and secure our second Mountain West title. But then, of course, the bowl game. And I've already been over this, essentially, but the defense didn't play well. Offense had a pretty solid game, and we had two Ja'Cory Day special teams touchdowns in a losing effort. I do have to say that is probably the most disappointing loss of the series. It's certainly up there next to the non-conference loss against Washington when we could have definitely beat them when we were... That was years ago. But this one now is at the top because of just the seniors that played their final game and it had to end that way. That's disappointing. But there was a lot of wins with the likes of JR Battle, Ja'Cory Day, and everybody else. So we have that still from this series. We had JR Battles set the Kalispell record this year for touchdown passes in a season, now at 33. And it's going to be hard for the next quarterbacks to top that mark because we don't have players like Ja'Cory Day and Lamar Williams ready to take on those roles. Those were unique players, and we now have a different identity in the future for the passing game. Even if recruiting goes well, it's not going to be the same offense. I enjoyed the two years of JR Battle and moving to more of a, I wouldn't say pro style necessarily, but more of a pocket passing oriented offense. Battle had the arm to get it done. I said this year he could be one of the biggest surprises of the team, and I think that came true. JR had a lot of touchdowns, the accuracy was better, and he gave us the most consistent quarterback play we've ever had. I'm surely going to miss Roscoe Sheridan, but that is one area of the team where we're actually prepared for the future. We have two running backs that we redshirted this season that I'm excited to get on the field next year, but here are Roscoe Sheridan's numbers. The stats obviously very good, 5'11", 225 pounds, he has very good acceleration and agility for his size, also generates some yards after contact. He averaged 102 yards a game this season, and he ends his career with 4,560 yards. That's a lot of production, and it will be difficult for anybody to match that again. I'm also surprised that as a receiver, his numbers were not quite identical, but pretty close every season. Corey Miller did more as a receiving back in other years. Unfortunately, Miller's senior season was kind of forgettable. He did get, you know, a fair amount of touches, but they just weren't as impactful as we had seen in the past. I liked Miller a lot as a sophomore and a junior, but he was kind of an offensive afterthought this season. Not many big plays, didn't catch the ball a ton, but I still liked Corey Miller as he did exceed my expectations in this series. Of course, Ja'Cory Day is one of the icons of Kalispell football, three-time Best Return Award winner. We've seen Ja'Cory make big plays from his time as a freshman all the way through his senior campaign. The receiving numbers never got huge. 740 is pretty good, especially for a slot receiver. Nine touchdowns this year, very good on the deep ball and getting yards after the catch. You're never ready to move on from a player like Ja'Cory Day because they never get old. They're always fun, they can give you a big play at any moment, and we don't have a player that's going to replicate that, at least not at this moment. But Ja'Cory gave us a number of memorable moments in this series, and he is going to be one of the players that we surely miss going into the future. Five kick return touchdowns, two punt return touchdowns, a passing touchdown as a freshman, throw in two rushing touchdowns as a senior, and 26 scores in the air. Not a bad resume for Ja'Cory Day. Day led us in receptions this year, but we had a lot of good contributions in the receiving game, and Hayden John Charles impressed me as a true freshman. I did not expect him to play as well as he did, but it turns out he was able to make a lot of tough plays, and I think that becoming a freshman All-American sets him up for... Probably a very good career upcoming, especially losing Day and Williams and knowing that John Charles will pick up some of that slack. He could have a monster season next year. I was especially impressed with his ability to make plays downfield and hang on despite contact. So, I'm very happy with our freshman tight end. 
Then there's Lamar Williams. We all know Williams' story. He was a junior college transfer, one of the best height, weight, speed prospects that we've ever seen. But unfortunately, as a junior, his first impression on us was dropping the first passes that went his way. Drops kept him off the field as Justin McClellan proved to be a more reliable option. But this year, as a role player, he, he was only getting a couple passes a game. But these passes were going for big yards, whether they were for long touchdowns on a go route or in the first game when he broke those tackles and ended up with a long catch and run touchdown, we couldn't ignore it. And the passes weren't getting dropped as much. Look at 2017, he had five drops and 11 catches. Not sure how many targets, but not very many, compared to four drops this year on considerably more targets. 900 yards, 11 touchdowns. That's a very good season. That's a Kalispell receiving record and a reception touchdown record for a season. Amante Jones came on strong toward the end of the year, ending up with nearly 600 receiving yards, and he projects to be our top receiver going into next season. He's not usually a downfield threat, but we've seen him get open downfield. We're going to have to reorganize this passing game a lot to move into the future to fit our players. Justin McClellan became the fourth receiver this year, but he has shown reliable hands. Just one drop as a junior and two drops as a senior. He was good when he got his opportunities, that's for sure. Not much else to share here in the receiving game. Bo Lee, I guess he did have that one awesome touchdown on that throwback. or Not sure if it's really a throwback, but it was that fullback wheel off play action. It was an awesome play. One of my favorites of the entire series. This year, I was disappointed by the offensive line. I actually had some pretty high expectations for Bryce Wiley, who gave up way too many sacks this year. And on paper, this says it's the worst year of his career. And he's been a three-year starter. Hopefully, as a senior, he can turn it around. The tackle situation was very shaky. I like Sean Gallagher at left guard and Andy Colbert at center. Thankfully, they're going to be back next year. And we're going to return four of five starters. We're going to move on from Bruce Franklin, who has graduated. And then the defense. They were kind of all over the place this year. We have talent, but it's not a complete defense by any stretch. Shannon Evans and Kelly John Charles can kind of play either safety spot. I'd have to say that Evans is a much better overall safety because I think Kelly John Charles gets lost in coverage too often, but due to the line of scrimmage, he is definitely an impact player, and you can see those 17 tackles for a loss. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Shannon Evans can play deep center field. He can play in the box. We'll have to see what role he gets next year, and that'll depend partially on who his new counterpart is going to be. We had three brand new linebackers this season, Alex Hardy, Anthony Owens, and Wesley Merrill. I didn't think any of those three played all that great in coverage. Hardy was my favorite of the three. I thought he made more impact plays, especially toward the end of the season. Glenn Hayes is kind of a chess piece. You can move him around at safety, nickel corner, and I'll be tempted to move him to safety next year and have him play that Kelly John Charles role. I ended up calling a lot of man blitzes, and what ended up happening was Kelly John Charles got into man coverage a lot more than he should have. If Glenn Hayes plays that role next year, he gets into man coverage a lot, he plays down in the box, I think he can make an impact. He kind of had that role this year when we went to a 3-3-5 look. Jared Merritt never became the dominant edge rusher that I hoped he could be. Maybe the intangibles played a role there, he only has 61 awareness but unfortunately he ends his career as a four-year starter with just 16 sacks and he peaked as a sophomore in that regard. James Hampton got to start this year as a junior and the height, weight, speed athlete recorded three interceptions for us. Was a little inconsistent at times, but I think he was our best corner and next year I hope that he can lead this secondary. For sacks, we had eight from Nate Graham, who's going to be back next year. I hope that he can keep applying pressure up the middle, but we're not going to have Elgin McCormick, who ends his career with 21 sacks and had three sacks in three plays in one of the games toward the end of the year to boost his sack total. Then Brandon Leak always seemed to pop up once or twice a game with a good play. It was his first year really getting playing time, and he'll have one more year to show what he's all about. 
We'll have two more years to watch Bobby Hill, who came off the bench, and then a few more sacks around here. A big bust was Damian Whitmore. Unfortunately, I hyped him up 6'8", 272. Really interesting skills here with a 93 finesse move, but unfortunately, we just didn't see it turn into production. We need more pass rush, though, and we'll go through the roster here in a little bit and see who might help us out more looking into Season 7. We didn't turn the football over a ton this season. James Hampton, three picks. Glenn Hayes had two. We did have some touchdowns, though, from the defense. Also forced fumbles here, three of them. And the touchdowns, those go to Glenn Hayes, both of them. We're going to miss Ja'Cory Day next year. I don't think anybody else on this roster can average 31.8 yards per kick return. Ja'Cory gave us excellent field position, and I think that's one of the things we're going to miss the most. Day had that ability to shorten the field and make big plays. So next year, it's going to have to be a lot more methodical, and we're going to have to have a more balanced offense, I feel. Here are career numbers now for various seniors. I always like seeing the numbers these players can rack up in their careers. JR Battle, 55 touchdowns and 30 interceptions. Roscoe Sheridan, I think he's going to hold on to that yardage record for a very long time. It would take many years for the next running backs to catch up. 34 touchdowns is also pretty impressive. It did go up from his sophomore through senior seasons. I'll miss Corey Miller as a role player, of course. Ja'Cory Day, 188 receptions and 2,500 yards, 26 touchdowns. Just going to be very difficult to replace him. Defensively, Kelly John Charles racked up a lot of tackles, including 35 for a loss. Jared Merritt had 44. I thought Merritt was better against the run than he was against the pass, and that was disappointing. 21 sacks for Elgin McCormick, that's very good. And then four picks in Kelly John Charles' career. Less than I would have liked. Oh wow, this is interesting here. I think this includes yards on special teams. And if that's the case, we have on paper the number one offense in the NCAA. Or I guess the number one yardage team. Not necessarily best offense, that'd be Nebraska. But with our special teams and high-powered offense, we had one of the best situations in college football. So I always compare our numbers to the rest of our conference rivals, the teams that we play nine times a year. For overall offense, we were top five. For passing offense, Kalispell number one in the conference. For rushing offense, least productive, which is disappointing. Points per game, we were fourth in passing touchdowns, number one, and rushing touchdowns, again, toward the bottom. For defense, Kalispell gave up the fourth most yards, including the most in the air. We'll try to improve that. We did have the best rush defense in the conference, however, and gave up the least amount of points while generating the most sacks. So I think that our pass rush was okay, but it was so inconsistent. And also keep in mind, we blitzed a lot. So when you blitz, you're going to get some extra sacks, but you're also going to give up some extra yardage, and that's what we saw here in the passing game. A lot of give and take there. On third down, I think we actually met my expectations this year. We were much better than in the past. We were pretty good on fourth down as well. Three for six on two-point tries in the red zone. How did Kalispell do here? Highest scoring percentage, which we pretty much always are, but we do settle for a lot of field goals down there. As far as defense goes, Kalispell has a very good red zone defense, but they didn't show that in the bowl game very well. How about the turnover differential? Kalispell negative seven. I want to get positive, and I want to get more takeaways. We only had 11 this year in 14 games. We had some players take home some hardware this season. All-Americans include Elgin McCormick, Nate Graham, Alex Hardy, and Anthony Owens, and Shannon Evans, and Kelly John Charles. Didn't realize there was going to be so many. Ja'Cory Day also as a returner. So as far as All-Americans that'll return, that includes Evans, Owens, Hardy, and Graham. Second team. I'm not sure anyone's here. Oh, Glenn Hayes did make it. And then a freshman All-American, Hayden John Charles, and Wesley Merrill. 
So some good awards there for Callus Spell. How about All Conference? We never get the offense here, do we, this year? Oh, Lamar Williams. I'll take that. The top receiver. That's first team. Bryce Wiley. Not sure he earned that. Sean Gallagher. Bruce Franklin. Elgin McCormick. Nate Graham. Brandon Leak. Alex Hardy. Anthony Owens. Hampton. Evans. John Charles. Bell. Childs. Not as a returner, though, for they... You kidding me? Dan White. What did Dan White do this year as a returner? What did he do better than Jacory? Well, he got yards. Where are the touchdowns at, Dan? Second team all conference. Roscoe Sheridan and Jacory Day. No quarterback for us. Andre Scott is here. Jared Merritt. Brock Oxendine for Wyoming. Wesley Merrill. Malcolm Tyson and Glenn Hayes. And again, no Ja'Cory Day here as a returner. Lamar Williams ended up ninth in the Fred Boletnikoff Award voting, and that's pretty good considering he was a part-time player most of the season. The Mackey Award is the one that I think we have to keep an eye on for the future. I think Hayden John Charles has that kind of potential to be in this race. Number one this year, though, that's elite production. Alex Hardy wins the Best Linebacker Award with 91 tackles, 10 for a loss, and 3 sacks. And Ja'Cory Day, of course, best returner in all of college football. Now we'll talk about the future of this team with players on the roster and the recruiting, which we're going to follow up on in the offseason tomorrow. That's going to be streamed at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. But let's get into looking at the future with this roster that we already have. Justin Colbert could very well be our starting quarterback. He could definitely allow us to do the same things we did with JR Battle. He's a pocket passer with a pretty good arm. We saw him in preseason and he was very impressive. As far as running back goes, I am very excited to see Marcus Payne. He's not the highest rated running back here, but he's the running back that I think has the potential to take over for Sheridan's role. 92 speed, but does he have the same ability to create extra yardage, whether it be with moves or power? We'll see him a lot in the upcoming practices. Marty Belafonte is the other red-shirted player, and he is another dynamic player with good speed and acceleration. I don't think Terrence McKinley would ever be a regular starter because he's just not very fast and he's not going to create many extra yards. So maybe the player to keep an eye on here under the radar is Kyle Thomas. He's 5'10", 175. He does have very good speed, acceleration, and elusiveness. He's one of the running backs here who has a dominant way of creating extra yardage. So maybe Kyle Thomas is a big player for us in year seven. At receiver, it's going to be Amante Jones and Mike Harris. We've seen them before. Harris has excellent hands. He doesn't drop much, but he won't give you much after the catch. Then there's Jermaine Finley and Justin Payne. No one here is a major speed threat. At pass rusher, I think one player who will get a big chance next year is Marion Triplett. He'll have two years of eligibility left. His awareness is low. I hope that gets a nice boost this offseason. But if his game comes together, I think he can be one of the most complete defensive linemen we've had come through Kalispell. Good size, speed, acceleration, plus respectable block shed and finesse moves. We're not going to lose our starting cornerbacks, but I'm excited about Jameel Butler. I've been impressed with him in practice before, and I think he'll get a chance next year to make some plays. He might be able to give us the flexibility to send Glenn Hayes out to safety while Butler takes over that nickel job. Also battling for the safety spot that Kelly John Charles is leaving will be Chris Baker. He's a little raw in coverage right now, but he'll have a chance to win that job. I wouldn't say we've built the most exciting recruiting class, but there are some good talents here. Juno Springs was our first commit. He is a three-star corner from Spokane, Washington. I think he fits best as a zone corner. He doesn't have the best size or speed or man cover ability, but Juno has an interesting skill set. He might even be worth a look at safety, but he is a lot smaller than most safeties. So I think that nickel corner could be his future, but it depends how well he plays in coverage. When it comes to receiver, we might need some true freshmen 
to contribute if we want to get downfield, and Carl Joyce can do that. Four-star wide receiver from Idaho. We didn't have the hardest time recruiting him, actually. He's a gem, plus five overall with deep speed and acceleration. He can also run good routes. Will he make catches, though? That's the big question with his game. We have Chase Rourke here, a three-star defensive end from Montana. He's from Billings. And he doesn't really stand out in any particular way, but he seems solid all around. Jaquan Cunningham is one of my favorite players in this class, and he can play that nose tackle role and help us against the run. I'm excited about the prospects of him playing alongside Boogie Turner. We probably won't have a strong leg kicker next year, but we did get Cedric Parks. I'll likely move him out to punter because he does have a weaker leg than Jeff Childs. But don't expect too many long 50-plus yard field goals next season. Then there's Antoine Knightley, another receiver from Kalispell, and he is another possession receiver. He won't make the big plays necessarily, and I think with the possession receivers already in front of him, it'll be a while before he takes the field. Keenan Gabbard is just tight end depth, probably never going to be a starter because he doesn't really stand out in any particular way. And then one pleasant surprise here toward the end. I wasn't expecting to get a commit from Tommy Jordan, especially this early, but we beat out Middle Tennessee and Memphis for the number 12 athlete in the country. 6'2", 201, and I want Tommy to play wide receiver. He's fast, not the best speed, but it is faster than most of our possession receivers. And I think while he could play defensive back as well, his best spot is likely at wide receiver with that good route running ability and the speed he does possess. We will finish out the rest of our recruiting in the offseason with some big names at the top. Brandon Warren could really shake up things. He's a five-star athlete, and I've thought about playing him at wide receiver, but consider his speed and his throwing talent I might have to consider playing him at quarterback. His hands aren't great right now, so maybe that would be his best position to begin. And if we do get Brandon Warren, I think our offense is going to be very unique in Season 7. He's one of the top athletes in the country, and I assume we're going to have to put a lot of points into this battle to beat Nebraska. The other player that's going to be very competitive is Jamari Akinjide from Oakland, California. We have some competition from Boise and Cal. I'd say Jamari is more of your prototypical strong safety with good size. He moves pretty well, and he's a tackling specialist, but coverage could use some work. There's also Marquise James here from Louisiana. We're in a battle against Texas A&M, which is an interesting battle for Kalispell. He's a safety, though, that's not very good in coverage, so he would likely be on the bench for a long time. We know how important it is to have offensive line depth, so I have interest in Rodney Hall from Minnesota, but we're battling against Florida State and Oklahoma. Can we actually beat out some of these big-name programs to land some prospects? Also, defensive line depth is a priority, and here is Adam Heath. This battle hasn't really gone anywhere, and I'm worried that this might be one of those that doesn't actually end with him picking a team. But look at the ratings. Everyone would love a player with this skill set on their defensive line. Those are the main focuses going into the offseason. It likely won't be one of our top recruiting classes, but if we can land Warren and maybe some of the other players there in that top five or six, it could be a respectable class. Right now it is ranked just 64th. I expect us to probably be around 60, 70 when all is said and done. So with that, another season of the Kalispell Dynasty has come to an end. Thank you all for supporting this series. We're already six years in and it hasn't really been that much time that we've been doing this series. At least it doesn't feel like it to me. But if you're enjoying the series, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already, leave your feedback down below. What should we be doing next with this team to sustain the success? It's going to be difficult to lose these players and to keep putting up win totals like this. But what gives us the best chance to keeping Kalispell a very successful program? Leave your feedback below, and I will see you in the offseason tomorrow, again, right here on YouTube.com slash MrHurricane at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll go through the offseason and spend some time in practice 
And then in a couple days, I'm sure I'll be streaming more practice again because I really enjoy that. And if we're having a brand new offense next year, I got to get some reps in. So I'll see you all then. Have a great day.